Hello again, this is Bolt Gun Metal, and I'm going to be talking loudly, and as I start every video with, that humming sound in the background is a loud air conditioner that I have to have on in the attic while I work. If not, it cuts off all my videos and basically makes it so I can't get any work done. So I'm going to talk a little bit louder, and hopefully it won't bother you. If it does, please move on. If not, I'll continue with the video. So, the last video I made like this was about combat medicine in the Warhammer 40k universe, mainly talking about the Imperial Guard, and if you're interested in that video, just check out my videos, there's only like eight of them compared to the shorts, and it should be the most recent one, uh, after this one's made. So, I'm going to continue this theme with the other thing that I'd like to talk about, which would be the humble infantrymen in the Warhammer 40k universe. I'm going to talk about my credentials real quick and then we'll move right past that because it doesn't really matter that much in this video. I spent four years in the army with an infantry unit. I was on the line and I mainly did training operations with them and basically got to be their mental health, uh, like if they needed a therapist or anything medical, they came to me. So I basically had every bit of negative, sad story, war stories unloaded on me and through my time with them, it really gave me a strong picture of who, who the infantry are and who they have been over time. And we're going to compare that to how they're represented in 40K. I think a difference here is I'm actually going to bring up other species, hopefully, where I didn't really get to do that with the medic video because it was already at 40 minutes or so. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into it by looking at some models that represent infantry in the 40K universe. An easy start is this Imperial Guard Army or Astra Militarum because it's just human soldiers which is going to be the most similar to the standard infantrymen that we're talking about and they will be referenced the most in this video. This is the infantry, these blocks of soldiers that have rifles, maybe bayonets, things like that, whose job it is to close in with the enemy, take objectives, and fight the enemy in close combat. For the orcs, the humble infantry looks like a boy, that's what it's called, boys with a Z, and this is what they will be represented as. We will get into them as well. So that is what infantry looks like, here's some savage infantry, and even here's some uh, ogre infantry from Age of Sigmar, so some fantasy stuff as well. Finally, we're looking at some space marines, and these are chaos space marines, but they'll make the point nonetheless, and we'll talk about what maybe they represent as infantry, hopefully as well. In Warhammer 40k, infantry are the forces that make up the bulk of your military. They're usually the backbone, and in a lot of editions you had to have them before you could call on special characters, weapons, and vehicles. So what were they for in previous games? Well, they're kind of a jack of all trades. You can usually give them the weapons that they need to get whatever job you're trying to get them done. The problem is they're rather fragile no matter what kind of infantry they are, they usually die fairly easily from sustained fire and things like that. Obviously, space marines and stuff are a little different. So, the definition of an infantryman in a war game would likely be the foot soldiers of a tabletop army. And I would say that are usually in squads or teams and move as such. So instead of moving as individual models like characters do, they're more likely to move as a full regiment or platoon. So we'll give that definition. What is a real infantryman? Give me one second. Sorry, a real infantryman would have a similar, kind of a similar description. You'd say it's the foot soldier that closes in and destroys the enemy. That's what I would use. It is just that. It doesn't matter what he uses. His job is to close in into close combat and to some degree and destroy the enemy, whether with a rifle, a pike, a knife, it doesn't matter. He's the guy who's supposed to go in there and get the job done. Is that what they're used in tabletop games for? Yeah, they're totally used to go fight the enemy and kill them. And so that's totally accurate. Let's talk about what infantry's purpose is now and how much it has changed throughout history compared to what they use them for in 40k. For instance, in my opinion, this may not be an opinion, it might just be true, the first time a primordial man ape creature picked up a stone or a bone and lifted it above his head and called it a weapon and then went in ahead and killed another thing, whether it was an animal or a person, he became a warrior. 
and the first time a human being became a warrior, infantry was born. So it's the oldest job in history um, because it comes alongside hunting and gathering. Um, so it's the super ancient culture and believe it or not it still exists largely the same even with all the sophisticated technology. So over time access to different weaponry led to Bronze Age, um, Iron Age, times like that where we eventually had to end up in like medieval times where they are using steel swords and shields and uh, plate armor to wage war. The standard infantryman was not a knight, though he was an up-armored soldier, just as we see today. So, the de depiction of infantry in 40k is largely accurate, though it often kind of spans from the like periods of time from I would say the medieval renaissance period of time or like the Roman times at the or Greek at the uh, furthest back or Egyptian all the way to modern times so all the infantry is influenced by things throughout history time and real things and such the idea of close combat with swords chain swords laser weapons it doesn't matter but to use a sword in close combat in the 41st millennium, we just don't do that now. Um, a sword in any form would be a useless weight to carry in battle now. Even officers don't carry their officers' swords anymore. The sword is obsolete. Yes, you could kill a human being with it, you could kill a monster with it, but it has no real value on a modern battlefield. There's better weapons, you'd rather carry a sidearm. So. Saying that, I would say that the infantry of the 41st millennium are based off of the infantry of history, not just any single time. For instance, the Imperial Guard being my favorite example to go with, are a odd mixture, I discovered this through my medic video, whether I said it clearly or not, I'll say it now. A lot of their doctrine and thought process is that of like a, uh, a medieval army, it's very, uh, reminiscence of renaissance thinking and the like the way they just throw themselves at the enemy you'd think they were all holding swords and shields even though they have rifles so a lot of the doctrine kind of does reek of uh times before modern ages more than 300 years back even then the aesthetic is often a mixture of like world war one two and modern age technology with a sci-fi spin on it. So basically, 40K's aesthetic can kind of tell us everything about the infantry very quickly with a space marine. When looking at a space marine, he is covered in knight-like armor, so we'll say 13th century style armor. His bolter is reminiscent of an MP5, which is a, or like its appearance, I'm just saying. It looks like a Heckler & Koch MP5, which is which design came out in the 80s, I believe, or 70s. And so that's a very modern weapon in his hands. But then the doctrine he fights with is rather medieval or World War I-like, trench warfare um, or World War II urban combat and such like that. I do see a lot of references to the mindset of World War II as well, uh, but that doesn't matter anymore. We'll get right back to the humble infantryman. Why is every war game based on infantry in the end? If you play Star Wars Legion, even in its name, Legion, a legion of stormtroopers, that's what it's saying. When you play Warhammer, it is building massive armies of troops usually. And so you might get the idea, like, what is the reason for infantry if there's better stuff? Like, there's tanks and airplanes and, you know, artillery. Why have people close in and go into a medieval warfare state? Well, believe it or not, what we've seen in Ukraine, Afghanistan, Iraq, is that combat, when it does happen, happens in one of two places. It, whether ha it either happens at a long distance or a short distance. So it's either going to be like extremely long distances, 400, 500 meters plus, or it's sub like 100 meters. Like so you can see the guy's face in details. 
So the idea that warfare, even though it's gotten more technologically advanced, we still have close combat. There's still door-to-door -door fighting, and CQC is what it's close, called, uh, close quarters combat. Um, no, we don't use swords for it, but we do up armor our troops, and then they clear rooms with firearms. Um, this isn't. This is so much like 40k. They just. It's more historically based in a sense. It's like they're gonna in 40k. They can also breach a door and kick it in and do all the same things as a modern soldier. But implemented within that are also going to be medieval tactics. He's going to clear a door with his las pistol, shoot two enemies, and then use his chain sword to finish one off. So it's an odd mixture of medieval warfare and World War I, World War II, and elements of modern technology and futuristic technology. This makes Warhammer 40K's battlefield and its infantrymen extremely potent and interesting. So we have to just jump right in to the Space Marines, the poster boy. When they were initially made, you know, there wasn't an Imperial Guard right away. It was all about the Space Marine being the infantrymen of the 41st Millennium. So we're going to look at him from that perspective because outside of the Imperial Guard, he is the infantryman of the, you know, Imperium for the Emperor and all that and whatnot. So a Space Marine represents this ultra sophisticated futuristic version of all of these types of infantrymen I've described. The knight from the 13th century, the World War One commander, and the World War uh, World War Two soldier, you know, all combined with a slightly futuristic aesthetic. The mindset of all those things are mixed too. You're going to have commanders that are fixated on close combat, closing in with a sword and fighting an enemy with a sword and shield, and then you're also going to have commanders that are more interested in long distance combat and. That's what's so different about an infantry. Like in World War I, there was a quote by a French general where he said, firepower kills. And what he meant was manpower didn't matter anymore. The weapons had become so devastating that now they were more deadly than the men that wielded them. And in Warhammer, that is exactly the case. The weapons are so deadly, the wars are so vicious that Infantrymen, you would think, almost don't have a place, but it's actually quite the opposite. It's like in this horrible battlefield where you can't move vehicles all the time, where you need something mobile that can move like a rat to the filth, an infantryman is the right grunt to go do that. And so in the 41st millennium, the soldiers are all representing human history on the battlefield against xenomorphs and evil forces. So our time on the medieval battlefield, our time in the trenches, our time in tank warfare, and our time with modern technology all wrapped up into one fighting force, the Astra Militarum, the Space Marines, and it's a representation of our historical successes, failures as infantry over time. The human species produces fantastic infantry that is been called super soldiers in the past. The legend of the Spartans from the past, um, the Crusaders, um, Genghis Khan and his rabble. There's been legendary warriors throughout time and in Warhammer they don't have to choose a single time period. They use all of them. So they can have a Genghis Khan style leader, they can have a Caesar style leader, Alexander, Wellington, Napoleon. They can pull from any period of infantry warfare which is the whole human history. So what we're seeing is that Warhammer 40k does an amazing job of representing its infantry. But let's jump into something fun, which is going to be the orcs and how they are represented as infantry. The orcs are a different species, right? Who cares? No, because we don't have other species to base our stuff off of other than animals. Most of the Xeno species are roughly based off of elements of the human condition. So, the orcs, what are they? They represent our barbarism and hunger for warfare. And you can say, well, humans aren't as barbaric as orcs. Well, we have been in the past, and we still remain that way in many ways. So, they are a representation of maybe the Mongols, the uh, Viking hordes, you know, uh, anything like that, gang warfare. Um, people 
who, when you work with infantry, meet people who come from a bad background, a lot of the times they speak very highly and love that life. They love the life of violence and death and destruction. And they love being a part of it, like an orc. And so those types of people give inspirations to people to write things like orcs and their whole mentality. And these are the kind of people that, hey, they believe they can charge the hill and destroy the enemy. And because they believe it, they succeed and they do, just like an orc. So orcs represent our barbarism and our love for warfare that we deny to ourselves. They are the part of us that knows that it loves warfare and doesn't deny it. It says a lot about Warhammer when it basically says an orc infantryman is bar none the least unhappy. And the reason he's the least unhappy is because he's not denying his barbarism in his animalistic ways. He's supposed to embrace it and love it, unlike a human who's supposed to try to be something more than an animal. An orc isn't expected to do that. So, we see that in Warhammer 40k, the infantry are representing different aspects of the human condition. The Astra Militarium represents the history of mankind fighting itself and becoming a deadly fighting force in close combat with a sword from our, pre, from our deep history to using the most sophisticated laser technology in the future. Um, a Space Marine is supposed to represent the most sophisticated version of an infantryman that the future may have. And what it shows is that there's not very many and they're very good. Who are they supposed to be? Well, they're called Marines. So let's go ahead and compare them to the U.S. Marines. U.S. Marines are not invincible, though they sure as hell do believe that. And they are often known to be pretty fucking fearless, especially on the battlefield when closing in with the enemy within bayonet range. They are known to be the fanatics of the combat infantryman world. They believe in the Marine Corps and they believe when they die, their souls regroup in hell. They are the most distinguished, violent fighting force that we have ready to deploy and destroy something. Usually that's how most countries' Marines are. Be it that they're most likely based on the Royal Marines and the U.S. Marines, from the 80s and 90s who were doing all kinds of interesting deployments, um, it makes sense that at the time, the, the Marine Corps really did have this wonderful, and still does, has a wonderful reputation as being this extremely deadly, deadly fighting force that basically fears no man and destroys the enemy and eats them for breakfast. They are like super soldiers. A highly trained U.S. military unit against an untrained unit of like gangsters with guns or, you know, untrained people picking up AKs, they will run through them like a hot knife through butter and then ask for seconds. And so they are our fanatics ready to deploy anywhere in the world on a moment's notice and defend freedom. Just like a space marine is supposed to go deploy anywhere in the galaxy at a moment's notice to defend the emperor and the empire. So they're very much so a representation of how we see the U.S. Marine as a legend. So I would say the Space Marine represents the legend of the infantry and where it will go until he eventually becomes the overpowered knight that he was back in the day because a knight was so well armored that sometimes he could really go out there and be like a tank and take quite a bit of beating from all these blunt weapons and sharp weapons because how well protected he was. They're saying that in the future, that knight mixes with a marine and becomes a knight, space, a knight marine in space that can fight anywhere. That's what they're getting at. So what you're doing in 40K is playing the history and the legend of your people, of the human race, and its ability to destroy itself and an enemy that it sees to threat itself, threaten itself. In 40K, it's a perfect world, in a sense, where the enemy is evil, they're awful, and the infantryman is the most important thing in the galaxy. In our world, that was a time when we were a primordial creature using sticks and rocks to survive. The infantryman was the most important thing in the world. He is no longer that. We now live in a world of modern warfare and smaller conflicts where being an infantryman isn't always the most important thing, but in 40K it is. And on the tabletop, your infantryman is often the weakest thing you've got. If you have space marines, you have terminators, tanks, dreadnoughts, commanders. So they never seem that impressive compared to the bigger things that tear them apart inevitably. What you have to understand is what they're representing is the human 
being on the battlefield, the human condition, once again, on the battlefield. They are those who know no fear, fanatical soldiers who are willing to fight to the last man, and then you have Imperial Guard who are just regular grunts stuck in the grinder. And when you look at what they're trying to say about infantry, is they're saying that over time, something has stayed the same. This primordial instinct to fight, kill, destroy, defend, it stays the same no matter what equipment they're using. So in the 41st millennium, they use everything. You could use a wooden club, an oversized wooden club, and a machine gun at the same time and get away with it because in their world, your machine gun might jam while you're in the midst of close quarters combat and you might need to use that club to bash somebody. So it's saying in, in their world, the infantryman is calling on every skill he's ever had throughout his entire genetic existence over the spe entire time humanity has existed. He's calling on the time he picked up a rock. He's calling on the time he donned armor and drew the sword. He's calling on the time he stormed the trenches, tank warfare. He's calling on that to fight for his people against all odds. And that's what's so interesting. 40K is the ultimate love letter to the infantrymen because it tells stories like when Cadia stood and the men didn't break, but the planet did. You know, the, the men did not fall back or quit, but the planet blew up beneath them. But the men would have kept fighting with or without a planet. That tells you the story of humanity's bravery. And that's what it's really about, is the infantry represent the bravery, the, the thing that is fragile on the battlefield that isn't afraid of that titan or that bio creature or that horde of alien scum. It's not afraid because it is a brave infantryman with, a, with a, hell, a million years of gut instinct on a battlefield, keeping it alive with its brothers. And it's like, that's what I see is in 40K, the infantryman is the game. These no-name soldiers fighting in the trenches, these orcs that are, make up the bands. It's not just the characters. The characters are a representation of the entire army. So if you have a badass character like Yarick, in a sense he's telling you stuff about what the humans are, have, the spirit that they have in them. And the idea is like there's almost a spark of hope that comes with them because it's the idea that humanity has been fighting against itself and fighting just in general since it was brought into existence. And now that fight has a purpose and the warriors of all those times, their sacrifices, they have a value because they're using all of that knowledge, all that instinct to win wars against a, an alien that can destroy all of them. In 40K, the infantryman is your army. Whether you use a lot of them or not, they're usually a pretty standard representation of what your army is about. What does the Space Marine book say? Space Marines. It means literally the little Space Marine guy. The game is about armies of infantry, artillery, and tanks, but it's always been a little bit more about the troops on the ground. They're the only ones that can take objectives, and they just made 10th edition all about objectives. What does that tell you? Infantry matters. It always has. They've always had that objective secured stuff just to show how much the designers want you to remember, how important it is to remember the little guy. There's nothing more satisfying than a Astra Militarum grunt getting the last shot on a death dread right before it closes in and destroys the entire squad. It just feels like the little guy got his hit in, like Rocky. So at this point, I'm going to end the video and just say that 40K does a wonderful job of representing what I saw. What it doesn't show is the inner turmoil within the platoons. Um, it does show uh, the commissars. And when I was in the military, it was mainly the sergeants that drew, dropped hell on you, less than the officers. It was usually sergeants, um, other enlisted soldiers. So that is a major difference, but I believe they pulled their commissar system and stuff from possibly the Russian system, since they still have that. Um, and it looks a lot like a commissar system from World War II, uh, Russia. But this is just a basic talk about how 40K represented the infantry, how it continues to do so. It showed the, spa the US Marines, the Royal Marines of today as badass super soldiers of the future. It showed the standard infantrymen of yesterday, uh, tomorrow, and today as the Astra Militarum grunt who's just doing his best out there. 
and it showed our barbarism and love for war through the orcs who it just shows who we are deep down is a sick creature that enjoys this and denies it um, but the orcs don't deny it they, that's why they're happy is they don't have to deny anything they love war and they don't have to feel bad about it unlike the other species so like not like necrons and uh, tyranids really feel that bad either um, but that's what I have to say about uh, the infantry experience of 40k if it's accurate if it is showing something that I agree with I would say anybody who has been with the grunts or knows anybody from that place will say it's a great representation the grim dark horror of the 41st millennium is a tragedy and the story of the infantrymen over time is a heroic tragedy where glory and the story of legends turns out to not be true and it's nothing but blood, guts, and horror. And 41st Millennium perfectly depicts that. So don't forget about your infantry troops and those hordes of little guys with guns and little orcs and creatures. Never forget about the hordes, never forget about the infantry because in the end, the whole game is about little infantry troops fighting out of board. So, that's what the game is. I really hope you enjoyed listening. This was Bolt Gun Metal. If you haven't subscribed yet, hopefully you do. Um, I'll probably keep putting out videos similar to this one. Thanks for listening. Goodbye.